Hello, Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here with team number 4414 High Tide here at the first championships. The Mad Men from Ventura have done it again with this incredible robot. It's their second robot of the season. They've learned a lot. they built this incredible robot. that's competing really well here at the World Championships. Can do everything with this big arm to collect algae and coral. A full width ground intake. So much more to find out of behind the bumpers. They have three regional wins under their belt. We have Harry, Meg, and Jasper. Let's find out more on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Kettering University's cutting edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, feature-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. All right, Harry, why don't you get us started? Let's talk about this huge full-length intake you guys have here. Yeah, so obviously this is our second robot of the season. Um, and the full width ground intake was kind of one of the big things we knew we wanted on the redesign. Um, and it was one of the most unique things that we didn't have on the first robot. So we're running um, hollow rollers everywhere for weight. It's all eighth inch polycarb with just 3D printed end caps, um, similar to 254 in 2022. Um, we obviously um, have a lot of star wheels on it. Um, we found them throughout the season and testing to be the best on the coral just because um, the coral's not compliant at all, and so the star wheels really help get a lot of compliance out of the coral. Um, we're also running a pivoting up front roller like most other teams with a ground intake, um, just because that helps when the coral comes in vertically like this to accommodate its um, big angle as it gets over the bumper. And then inside of our funnel here, we're just running two X44s, one on either side, um, spinning it in. This is something that we prototyped a lot on our first robot, um, and so this is pretty much copied over from the intake of our first robot as best as we could just because we'd already done the prototyping from that and learned a lot from the geometry of it. What do you say was the most challenging part of this rebuild? Um, of the rebuild as a total, definitely the intake was the scariest thing just because it was the like most unsolved challenge. It's hard to just, you can't just solve the intake mechanically. You have to prototype it and, and like um, you're doing a lot of guesswork kind of and prototyping to figure out if it's going to work. So. That was definitely the biggest question mark with the rebuild, I think, that was like a little bit scary going into it. Thank you, Harry. Yeah. Meg, we're going to pass it over to you to talk a little bit more about the high tide elevator, pretty famous. We've seen that a lot of teams here at Champs, as well as this big arm and climber system. Yeah, so again this year, exactly like our 23 elevator, we're running an internally belt-driven elevator. Uh, for this second robot, it's a two-stage elevator. Some differences that we've made is in our tensioning system. So now we're tensioning both the up run of the belt and the down. Um, and so they're both wrapped around pulleys on each side. And then we have a ratchet on the back to tension those. Um, and so that was really because uh, with the 23 elevator, we were able to buy different gears with slightly different clocking in order to get the two belts uh, to be like clamped at the same spot. Um, but uh, with less guesswork and less of just buying random gears until you find the right combination, uh, you can just add ratchets and tension the up and down separately to make the whole system smoother. Uh, off of our elevator, we have this rotary arm mechanism, and so we're running it using a 10 DP gear, and then we have a laser cut plate cut by Fabworks uh, with a 10 DP profile cut into it. And then that is what we're spinning our arm off of. For the arm, you know, obviously we pulled a lot of uh, inspiration from other teams, but we're running two six inch X contact bearings that we're really clamping this arm along to on our elevator carriage. Um, at the end of this arm, which is a carbon fiber tube, nothing special about it, uh, just bought pre-length cut. And then we, at the end of it, we have our claw. And so this is our manipulator for both algae and coral. Uh, we embrace the super pinch for algae this year. Uh, and then it grabs coral out of this polycarb funnel system. Could we actually see the arm go up and down and like see that rotary mechanism? Do you like L3? Let go and... Do you like an L4? Just go to a couple. L4, L3, L2. You don't have to score it. 
like swing the arm around a little bit. Don't score it. Can you let go? Yeah, L1. Or is that L1? Cool, let go. Yeah. Impressive that it's able to handle those those perpendicular corals so well. Well done with your prototyping. I understand you guys also have a mini fridge uh, in your pit. What, what are you guys drinking this year? Yeah, fully stocked with Red Bull at all times. I love it. So as we just saw with that demo, control system here is really strong for High Tide, right? You guys clearly put a lot of work into the sensing, the programming, this robot. Jasper, can you tell me a little bit more about what those keys to success for you guys were? Yeah, so on the robot, we have uh, three sensors. Um, uh, we have a sensor in the funnel right here, a sensor in the intake here, uh, and a sensor on the claw. And with those sensors, uh, we're able to tell where the coral is in the robot at all times. Um, and based off of that, we're able to run a state machine on the claw to tell it what it needs to do. Um, for example, if the claw doesn't have anything in it and the intake has something in it, then we need to go grab uh, a coral. And so that's... Um, well, you see the claw will go down and grab it and then go back to our stow position. Um, in terms of scoring, uh, we have all of our controls on a single uh, driver controller. Um, we're able to bind all of his buttons to every single action he needs to do. Um, and in terms of scoring onto the reef, uh, we're, we are auto driving and making the process as easy as possible for the driver. When he presses the button, the robot will drive up and go to position uh, until he's ready to score and confirm with his right trigger. Um, and in terms of our auto drive, we are using a profile PID controller uh, to just have more control over our acceleration and our velocity um, and make it as smooth as possible so that we hit, uh, we score on the reef every single time. Very incredible control system design there. Well done, High Tide. Before we wrap it up, I want to talk a little bit more about the climber. And I think either Meg or Harry, Harry you want to talk about the climber? Um, really cool design here with the wheels. How are you guys able to just climb so quickly? <clears throat> yeah, so obviously we went with um, a powered climber for this robot, um, very similar to what um, a lot of other top teams have been running. Um, one of the most unique things about our climber is this over center four bar linkage right here. So one of the problems we had is the force of the cage hitting the um, climbing mechanism would bounce it back and that would cause it to like bounce off the cage so um, it's mechanically um, fixed outwards right now with this over center four bar linkage back here and then when the climb pulls down here it just comes down with that linkage just like that very cool well team 44 14 high tide thank you guys so much for taking the time to talk with us today on fun robotics network best of luck to you guys at the rest of the world championships you guys are doing incredible thank you so much for helping us learn Thank you all so much for watching. My name is James for Fun Robotics Network, signing off. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. Kettering University's cutting-edge programs and their experiential co-op model seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds, offering hands-on, future-focused learning that empowers students to pursue new ideas and inspires other institutions to follow their lead. Don't just be ahead of the curve, create the curve. Get more information at kettering.edu first.